Have you ever felt like the blessings you were praying for didn't come in the way you wanted or even come at all? Well, have you heard about the blessing of contentment? This can be a quick way to feel peace. So let's dig in and talk about it. Hi, and welcome to Magnify. We are a podcast that helps keep general conference top of mind without adding to your to-do list. I'm your host, Katherine Davis, a mom, a seminary teacher, and a big football fan who loves God. And I am so excited to learn and be inspired with you. We know life is busy, and we are here to lighten the load by bringing you weekly spiritual reminders that will leave you feeling a little bit better than before. Hillary Craner, one of our Magnify contributors, is here today to chat about some spiritual reminders that she heard from Elder Anderson's recent general conference address, Opening the Windows of Heaven. Hillary, I am so excited that you're here, and I think this is going to be an amazing conversation. I'm so excited to be here. Well, before we get going, I have one question for you. So I know that you are a mom and a graphic designer. And on your Instagram, I've seen you jam out to some seriously good 80s hits. Oh, yeah. So if you only had one shot at karaoke night, Oof. what is the song you're going for? Oh, it's got to be Whitney Houston. I'm not super picky as long as it's a Whitney song. And no, 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 no. Okay, you said karaoke. I can't sing at all. I lip sing. So the karaoke night would have to be a lip singing night. And I could put on the performance of a lifetime if it was lip singing. Karaoke, we better stick with like um, Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star or something that I don't, you know, it doesn't require a whole lot of talent. Range. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> a song that requires zero talent. <laughs> I, in fact, I, quick side note, when I would sing to my babies, Instead of it calming them, literally, I had one baby that would cry even harder. She would, it would, she, if I started singing, it was like, it made the situation so much worse. So <laughs> if that tells you anything. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> well, Hillary, I'm really excited to talk with you about this conference address by Elder Anderson and his conference address is titled opening the windows of heaven. And I want to know some of your first thoughts about this conference address, because sometimes we hear it, we're like, oh, tithing, really? That's what we're going to talk about? So what is your first reaction? Yeah, I was uh, similar to you. In fact, I'm trying to remember even listening to it when it came on, but I do remember some of just like the really wonderful stories that he shared about these people who had faith and the thing that stuck out to me the very most was just how much God loves us, how much our Heavenly Father loves us and wants to bless us. And so truly, when I think about tithing, it's more he asked us to do this just so that he has another way to be able to bless us. It's another avenue that he can um, show his love and, and bless us. And I think there is so much to this talk. And as we dive in, the principles are eternal and it's not just about tithing principles. So for all of our listeners who maybe felt a little bit like me and think, ah, I don't know if I want to listen to a podcast on tithing. I think there are fundamental principles that are impactful and life-changing as we get into this talk, that it's not just about money, right? And I think you have encompassed those so well in your three takeaways and so the, your first insight is that the Lord loves us and wants to bless us more than we can even comprehend. What was it that inspired this thought for you? Yeah. So one of the scriptures that he shared was in Malachi. And he said that as we pay our tithing, but it will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I personally believe that we truly like our human minds don't have the ability to comprehend just how much heavenly father loves us and how much he wants to bless us and how much he blesses us on a daily basis. And 
you know, this scripture just saying that I love the visual of, of Heavenly Father pouring out the blessings so much that we don't even have room enough to receive it. And as I think about that, I, I, I it, it, it's overwhelming to be honest, is we, if that's, if that's the one thing you're going to focus on of all of conference, even it's just beautiful to know that he has the ability to, and he has the desire to do that, to bless us. Hillary, what do you think that looks like? that we don't have room enough to receive it. I keep thinking, I think I have room. <laughs> yeah. What What does that look like for you? I have honestly was trying to think of a visual because I am a very visual learner. I love food. And so literally the only thing that I could think of, and this is probably silly, but is when you have the fondue fountains, And the chocolate is just spilling over. And at first, like when you first see that, you're panicked because you're like, well, where is this going? Is this going to make a huge mess or whatever it is? But so visually, it's just something that is continually spilling over, not just once, not like one time pouring a glass of milk and it's spilling over, but just a continuous spilling over of blessings. And I think that that happens for us every single day and uh, in the little things and the little things that he blesses us with, whether it's getting a text from somebody that came in at just the perfect time, or there's just so many things. I think that when we get to the end of this life, we are going to just be awestruck with how much we were blessed on a daily basis from our heavenly father. I love that visual because to me, it teaches me a lot about the nature and character of God, of who he is, that he wants to bless us. And in fact, it reminds me of that scripture from Doctrine and Covenants 41, where it says, hearken and hear, O ye my people, saith the Lord and your God, ye whom delight to bless with the greatest of all blessings. And I think, uh, how does he, like he delights that I delight to bless you. And that teaches me a little about who God is, that he delights to bless us. And so, Hillary, how have you felt the Lord delight in blessing you? So first of all, as you were reading that scripture, I felt like I know what it's like to delight in giving my children something. For example, we have Christmas coming up and Christmas morning is literally one of my favorite mornings of all the year. because. Even if it's just a little gift, if it's that one thing that our kids have been hoping for, it brings me more joy than it brings them. And I think being a mom has helped me realize the delight that Heavenly Father has. I think that it's really easy to feel that love and to see those blessings when things are going right, when life doesn't necessarily have any major chaos. I mean, life is always chaotic, but I do feel like there are times in our lives when it's a lot harder to feel that love and to recognize those blessings. And sometimes it takes looking back on a situation to recognize and see that even if we didn't feel it in the moment, our Heavenly Father was there and was loving us all through that trial. When have you experienced that? I've had a few experiences in my life. You know, it's when the lightness just becomes a lot more dim or even completely dark in, let me think here, 2008, I gave birth to my second son and he was stillborn. In fact, the other day, every Sunday, we like to watch family videos and it's just kind of one of those activities we do on Sunday. And one video in particular popped up. And it was a compilation of photos from my son's funeral. And I just remember looking at myself, this young mom who was completely broken. I can feel exactly how she was feeling at that time, still to this day, even though it's been 14 years. And it was just this complete and utter feeling of 
brokenness and darkness. I remember asking why, you know, I think a lot of times when we go through hard situations, we ask why, and it's really hard for us to recognize any kind of love that is coming from our Heavenly Father in those moments. But as I watched this video and and saw this broken mom, I wanted to reach out through that screen and give her the biggest hug and tell her that Heavenly Father was there with her on that cold fall day when she was burying her son. That the reason she was able to stand and be there was because he had sent his angels to lift her up. While I may not have felt it in the moment, Heavenly Father was blessing me and was there. And it would be one of those times in my life that would propel me to lean into my Savior, Jesus Christ, and to become closer to Him. I really do think that in those big, dark moments, it's not that Heavenly Father's love isn't there. It's usually that we just don't recognize it. It's it's not him that's not showing up. It's us that's not able to see it. But as I look back, he his love and his blessings are continuous, are overflowing, just as we talked about. And that's what gets us through the really difficult situations and, and trials of our lives. I think, Hillary, it's so easy to look at a day like that day or a day when we're in the middle of a hard trial and think, where are those blessings that there's not enough room for me to feel it or to receive it? And I can only imagine on that day feeling like, God, where are your blessings? Where are your promised blessings? And so how are you able, honestly, how are you able to make that tragedy into a blessing? How are you able to see the blessings? Well, I truly believe that it's not me that's able to see those blessings. I gave as little as possible. Any, I didn't have a whole lot to give Heavenly Father in that time. I offered a prayer yeah. and he magnified that. Even though it was a prayer of, please help me know that you're here. Please help me know that you still are aware of what's happening to me and my little family. And he took that and magnified it. And he showed me in the little things. I had a two-year-old at the time and we had so much time to just snuggle. And he would come up and he was the snuggliest toddler I've ever had. He wasn't a busy kid. And I truly think that that was one of the things that Heavenly Father blessed me with during that time because he knew that all I needed was to sit on the couch and hold my son. He helped me recognize that. It wasn't me that was like, oh, this is a great coincidence. It was him through the Holy Ghost telling me, I am here for you. We're going to take this major tragedy in your life and we're going to help it become a blessing because it will help your testimony grow. It will help you realize and come to truly know that you will see your son again someday, that there is life after death. I can't take any credit for turning it into a blessing. It's, it's truly just when we, when we turn it over to the Savior, those trials can be blessings in the end. So beautiful. And I think that leads us in perfectly to your second takeaway which is that blessings come in different ways. And I think you experienced blessings in many different ways that day and probably for the weeks and years to follow. But can you tell me a little bit about this takeaway? What in this talk inspired you with that thought and especially about the blessings of contentment? The blessings of contentment that came to my mind because in 2015, we, it was actually this week in 2015, we found out that my husband had six weeks to find a new job. And that's really hard news, especially this time of year with Christmas coming up. We had three young kids. I was pregnant with our fourth. I just remember going to Thanksgiving that year and being, I, this says a lot about me, but I, you know, it's, you just feel like, what is there to be thankful for? <laughs> it was really hard because 
we were scared. There were no prospects. We knew that we still had a mortgage to pay and groceries to buy. And on top of that, we wanted to provide a somewhat normal, quote unquote, normal Christmas for our kids. After having sort of this bad attitude over Thanksgiving, I just decided, you know what, we're going to do the best that we can. I went through and found toys that my kids hadn't used in a while and other things that were in our storage room. And I put it up on the marketplace, you know, online marketplace and sold those things. And whatever money I got from those things is what I turned around and bought a present for each one of my kids, at least. And we had decided we weren't going to go overboard. We were going to stick to one present. My husband and I weren't going to get presents for each other. Uh, simply because we didn't know how much money we would have if there would be a job in, you know, in the future. And we wanted to be really, really careful with our friends. Catherine, honestly, that was my favorite Christmas that I have ever had in my entire life. When Elder Anderson was telling this story about, you know, these people who had lost their jobs and, and yet they were blessed because they listened to Elder Anderson. I think that what those people were blessed with was the same thing that my husband and I were blessed with that year, and that is contentment. And a lot of times when we pray and want, I remember saying prayers every night to have my father during that time, please bless that we'll get a job and we'll be able to provide our kids with a great Christmas or whatever it is. It was these temporal blessings that I was asking for, but what he gave us was so much more. And that was to just be content and to be able to see how blessed we were and to feel so much gratitude for the many blessings that we did have. I think sometimes when we talk about blessings from the Lord, we limit him in terms of either temporal or physical blessings. Yeah. And that's limiting God and limiting his nature and his character. And what? an incredible blessing, particularly around this time of year, where I think so many of us are feeling the stress of more, 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 or are my kids going to be happy? Or can I provide like what a time to remember that one of the blessings that can be promised us is contentment. And Hillary, why, why was that Christmas so great? Why do you think it's so important to find contentment? You know, I think there are a few reasons why it was great. One, you're able to focus 100% on your Savior, Jesus Christ. I really feel like it was, we weren't surrounded by tons of cousins or anything that year either. And I'm not sure, I can't remember why, but we happened to just be our little family in our home and it was so peaceful. But I really think that being able to recognize how blessed we were to have each other, how how blessed we were to have the Savior, like He is the greatest gift. Focusing on that truly just helped us feel like, what what more do we need? We don't need to be opening endless amounts of gifts in the morning on Christmas morning. While that's fun and has its own place and, it, you know, is, is great, that Christmas, I really think that we were able to just truly zero in and focus on the true meaning and, and feel just so much love from our heavenly father and Jesus Christ. Taylor, I really think this is one of the trickiest things. I think it's so tricky to feel content in today's world where we are surrounded by comparisons. I think often we aren't content with our situation or our children or decisions. And we think, why aren't our children making better decisions? Or why isn't our marriage like their marriage? Or why can't we have more things? Or whatever the reason is for not feeling content. I think so many people do. So what advice would you give to somebody who's really finding it hard to just feel contentment? Yeah, I, I honestly think that it takes work. It's easy to think like, well, is contentment uh, complacency, right? Like if I'm content, yeah. am I, I'm good. I don't need to work towards anything else. I'm just happy with what I have and happy with where my testimony is at, happy with all these things. But content does not mean complacency. It means striving to be more 
like Heavenly Father. And I think one way that we can do that is through gratitude. I think that that is the key. If we were to take time every single day to just think of the top three things that we're grateful for. I mean, our, our prophet even instructed us to do that a few years ago, you know, that he prescribed us gratitude because it would heal all of these things. And I, I think that it will also bring us contentment, which is just honestly, as I think about it, it is probably one of the greatest blessings that we could ask for. I think that it makes it so that we think way less about ourselves and are able to focus so much more on others. I think that it helps us to become more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I think that's so important to remember is that it takes work, especially if we're experiencing a loss, whether that's a job loss or a loss of what we wanted our future to look like, or just if we're in a moment of loss. And sometimes for me, I have to take it in in moments, in little moments. And when I look at a sunset or a sunrise, or I look at a child, or I look at the scriptures, or when I can drive by a temple or I'm in a temple is hold on to those little moments of contentment and, and how that feels and hopefully do the work with gratitude or with forgiveness or with asking of God's blessings and his love that I can stretch those moments out to longer periods of time. But I think we have to give ourselves a little grace and understand that if we pay our tithing or if we do all the things we're supposed to do, that it's not going to automatically be, I'm going to be content 24 hours a day, right? That it's something we have to work for, but those promises are there. Yeah. That's beautiful. I I love that thought of being able to stretch those moments out too and just really revel in them. I like revel in them. I like that. (laughs) Okay. So your final spiritual reminder is that this is God's work. Can you explain that a little to me? Yeah. So the thing that was just so amazing to me as I studied this talk was everything that we are given and everything that we are comes from God. And yet all he asks of us is just a little bit, whether it's the law of tithing, which is one tenth, you know, or whether it's just a desire to have a stronger testimony. He, he requires so little of us. And then he takes that and he gives it back to us in greater forms. I think that God's work is showing his love and blessing his children. We talked about how much he delights in it. So Hillary, can you think of a time when you have sacrificed your time, energy, or talents or something for God and you felt that you were filled with his love or that you were blessed beyond measure? There are lots of things to choose from. The one that comes to my mind as you know, as the forefront of my mind is uh, right now, my husband and I get to teach the seven-year-olds in primary and the love that I have for those kids, I never could have imagined would come with that calling. I remember when we were first called, it was kind of like, oh boy, here we go. (laughs) We have seven-year-olds. We know what it's like. And it's going to be crazy and we probably won't get much out of Sunday. You know, we won't come home feeling very fulfilled, but it has been one of my very favorite callings because those kids have taught me so much about our Heavenly Father's love. That one hour that I give them on Sunday, I feel like what I have gotten in return has been tenfold just because of what they've taught me and how, yes, there are some days that I leave feeling like that was a train wreck or that was, you know, complete chaos. But the moments where they get what we're teaching or they, they feel the spirit or they are the ones that bring the spirit into the class that is something that has truly just been a huge blessing to me. I think that's the powerful reminder of this talk 
is that whatever we offer, whatever we give, no matter how small or meager, meager it is, the widow's might or whatever that is, whatever we offer, that we are given tenfold in return. That that's the God who delights to bless us. Well, Hillary, as you know, with each episode of Magnify, we like to end with a small and simple challenge. It's something we can take forward into our week from the conversation today. So as you think back on our conversation, what is your small and simple challenge for us to take into this next week? With it being Thanksgiving that's coming up, I think just taking the time, whether it's to say a prayer of gratitude or to write down three things you're grateful for, just really have gratitude at the forefront of your mind and to find a way to express it, whether it's to your Heavenly Father or in a notebook or something to where that is able to fill your heart during this season of Thanksgiving. You know what? There are so many studies that have been done about the power of gratitude Mm -hmm. from top leading institutions. And I just think there's a change that happens in our heart when we practice and apply gratitude. So I am really excited to hear what people feel and what they experience as they try and implement this challenge. Yeah, I have loved this conversation and I love that we've been able to talk about the blessings that come from just the littlest offerings from us. And I would love to continue this conversation over on the Magnified Community Instagram. That's my jam. I love Instagram. And I would love to hear what what thoughts you had during after listening to this podcast, but also what are you grateful for? I think that when we see what other people are grateful for in their lives, sometimes it helps us think, oh yeah, I'm grateful for that too. And so we would love to hear what it is that you are grateful for this season. Hillary, thank you so much. Well, thank you guys. You're the best. 